If you watched my previous video, you probably know that I just recently built another DIY enclosure. On that video, there was a ton of speculation as to what I'm doing with this new enclosure. So while I set up that enclosure, I'm going to be talking more about it and why I made it. So many of you assumed because I made another enclosure that I was just getting a fourth hamster, which you couldn't have been any more wrong. I am not getting a fourth hamster. I have literally nowhere else to put a fourth hamster. And it just would make the room extremely tight fitting to just put another enclosure in there like that, especially since I do not want to take up any more space from my rabbits living in there. So this enclosure, in fact, is actually an upgrade for one of my current hamsters. So basically a couple of weeks ago, I was sitting in my living room. It was around 7 a.m., maybe 8 a.m. And all of a sudden I heard this extremely strange, scraping, loud noise. And it was coming from the pet room. And this was a noise I've never heard before. I had assumed that this was something the rabbits were doing because sometimes they get into trouble. Um, they're the ones who tend to make more noise than my hamsters. So I went to investigate. To my surprise, the rabbits were sitting very peacefully on the carpet and I looked up and my male Syrian hamster Dipper had dug to a corner of his enclosure. He lives in the Night Angel Bigger World large enclosure currently. And he was chewing and gnawing at the plexiglass in the corner. He was literally opening his mouth and scraping his teeth on the plexiglass, leaving marks on it. So I was super confused by what Dipper was trying to do in the moment, whether he was just trying to burrow and was like, oh, plexiglass, I'm gonna chew on you. Or maybe he was trying to tell me something else. So in that moment, I managed to get him to stop chewing on it. I also didn't want him to escape out or like end up chewing through the plexiglass because hamsters can chew out of almost anything besides glass. So a couple days later, this time it was after I had free roamed him and this was a couple hours later and I was sitting in my living room at night and I heard the noise again and I went in and looked and Dipper was doing that again. This is when I concluded that this was a boredom behavior Dipper was showing this wasn't just a one-time thing. So many people may be thinking, well, isn't your enclosure large enough? Don't you have a, enough enrichment? Why is your hamster showing boredom signs if they're in an enclosure that's considered large? Because a hamster can show boredom signs in any sized enclosure. This is why when I'm asked in a comment something like, hey, is 900 square inches of floor space big enough for my hamster? I really can't answer that question. I'm not the hamster that has to live inside of that enclosure. Hamsters aren't these factory made toys that are all ex identical to each other. They're not all going to be happy in the same amount of space. So to say that all hamsters are gonna be happy in 900 square inches of floor space just isn't an accurate thing. 900 square inches of floor space definitely is a decent size, but there's no telling whether or not the hamster you get is going to be happy with it. This is why hamsters can be pretty difficult pets because you have to actually have space to be able to upgrade if necessary, because just because you thought that the enclosure you bought was going to be enough, doesn't mean it's going to be enough. Now, if Dipper was doing that in this enclosure and I wasn't providing all of the different types of enrichment a hamster needs, then I would probably start off by trying to fit those into the enclosure. But because Dipper already has all of the enrichments that a hamster needs, 
I need more space for him to be able to fit more enrichment into the enclosure, which is why I decided to build him the DIY enclosure. This enclosure is going to give around, I think it's like 250 square inches of floor space more than the previous enclosure. Like Dipper's last enclosure, I am adding in his pet security camera and you guys love these cameras. And if you have any sort of anxiety with your hamster and whether or not they are alive or dead, 100% would recommend getting one and they will help eliminate all of that anxiety. These are the Waze V3 security cameras. Um, how I attach them to the enclosure is it comes with a 3M sticky thing and a magnet. So I 3M the magnet to a place in the enclosure that is kind of going to be able to foresee the entire enclosure. Um, and then you stick it on and it's, it's absolutely amazing. I'm not sponsored by them. I just highly recommend them. Another thing is that when I switch my hamsters to a, another enclosure, a lot of people often get worried that I switched because I don't recommend the other enclosure anymore or that it's unsafe, but I have nothing against the Night Angel Bigger World Large Enclosure. I think it is a great enclosure. It is a decent size. Many hamsters can live happily in it without any issues. Dipper just was no longer happy and he needed more space. So what am I going to do with the Night Angel enclosure? The Night Angel enclosure actually is a flat pack style type. You can d disassemble it and it can just be stored flatly. So for now, that is what I'm going to do with it. Maybe in the future, I may use it for something else. You never know what is going to happen in the future. It's always good to have spares in case of an emergency. I know somebody's probably like, well, you could use the Night Angel for waddles, but I actually looked into this and the Night Angel large enclosure is only like, I think it was, it was either, it was such an insignificant amount of floor space that it really wouldn't be an upgrade to waddles and it would just be a little bit more stress on him to switch all of his stuff into a different enclosure. Waddles is perfectly satisfied in his Linman enclosure, so I don't see any reason to have to like switch him into the Night Angel just to give him like 20 square inches more floor space. Waddles enclosure, I have not decided where exactly it is going to fit. Currently, it is actually um, right by the door. It's not going to be sitting on the floor because that just takes up a lot of space in the room. So I am going to be utilizing that table that the Night Angel was on, and I'm either going to be placing uh, Waddle's enclosure on that inside of the room, or I'm thinking about taking the closet doors off of my pet room and having his enclosure in there. I really am not happy with my pet room's layout. I don't like the fact that they placed the windows and closet where they did because it leaves you with not a lot of space to place things, if that makes any sense. I am very grateful for my pet room, but if I could make a couple of changes to it, I definitely would make a few. I'm pretty confident in saying that Dipper will be pleased with his new enclosure and uh, fingers crossed that he doesn't show any other boredom signs. Mabel is in the exact same sized enclosure and she is happier than a hippo in a mud puddle. Oh, that's not how you say it. I think it's happier than a pig in a mud puddle. Yeah, but hippos like mud too, so same thing. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.